Hi, grade nines. This is lesson eight in unit five. Um, we're gonna start today's lesson with a warm up, which reviews some of our solving equation skills from unit, really from unit two and three and four. So if you could pause the video now, I'd like you to give these a good solid try um, to solve each one and then unpause when you are ready to see the answers. Okay, so here we have the solutions for all of those equations. Just a few things to take a look at. The first one, probably not too difficult. You have to remember to multiply in that two, and then we're moving all of our variables to one side and all of our numbers to the other side. You may or may not be showing this many steps um, at this point, but you should show Kind of that same process or a similar process and end up with x equals three the second question b i think was actually likely the hardest one for people because of this one half now you might have um kind of a a, a thought to say hey i want to just make that 0.5 because i hate fractions and i can just make it 0.5 and then work with it like normally and that's not not necessarily a terrible idea for something that's one half, but if it was something like one third or five sevenths or something, then we wouldn't be able to just make it a nice decimal. It would be a big, long repeating decimal that we wouldn't be able to use accurately like that. We wouldn't be able to keep enough decimal places. So we do need to know how to work with our fractions. So the first thing I would do here is to get rid of this two on the bottom in one of my terms. I'm going to multiply every single term. See, I have multiplied every term, including the opposite side, both sides of the equation, by the lowest common denominator. So here, that 2 and that 2 are going to cancel out. So I'm just left with 1x, no more fractions, great news. And then I'm multiplying each one. 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 2x is 4x, and like, just like that all the way along. From there, you can simplify looking for your like terms, x's together, numbers together, and then it's pretty straightforward to solve from there. The last one, just sort of like the first, we've got two different brackets. So remember that the number in front multiplies into the bracket. Watch out for the fact that that three is a negative. So when it multiplies a seven, it's negative 21. Gather your like terms and then solve normally. So you can pause that to double check your work. Moving on to our new stuff for today, we're going to start looking at how to create an equation and then solve it. So these are gonna be the same type of solving equations in our algebra as what we just looked at. And actually most of our equations are gonna be easier than those ones, but we're not gonna be given the equation in a question. We're gonna be given a word problem and we have to figure out what the equation would be. So give these a try. See if you can write an algebraic expression for each one of the following things. Pause it and give it a try. Okay, so here, if we wanna talk about somebody's age plus seven, I might just call that X plus seven, whatever the first person's age is, seven years older. Double the width. Remember the word double means multiply by two. So I would say two W. Half the cost minus three. So you could say one half C or C divided by two, take away three. Four times a number, so four times my number, decreased by two, that means minus two. So these are the kind of words that we're gonna have to watch for, like plus, double, half, those kinds of things, decreased, um, and realize what operations they represent. Okay, so in our first example, we have somebody ordering pizzas. Rhea orders three pizzas. What's the cost of each pizza if the delivery charge was $1.50 and the total bill was $27? So if you wanted to figure out the total bill, we have three pizzas, so three times the price of each pizza plus the delivery charge equals 27.
And I'm just going to clarify that my P stands for the price per pizza. Now this is an equation that we can solve. So I'm going to use opposite operations, subtract $1.50 from both sides. So 3P equals 25.50, and then divide by 3, so P equals 8.50, so $8.50 per pizza. If it's a word problem, we have to answer in a sentence, so we'll say, therefore, the pizzas cost $8.50 each. Okay, next one. Here, we've got the perimeter of a rectangle is 41 centimeters. So, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing here, but if I hear, see the word rectangle, I'm gonna draw a rectangle. A diagram can really sometimes help. Okay, so then I'm gonna kind of highlight some stuff that I want to look at. So this says the length is five centimeters less than two times the width. That's a little bit to decipher. So I know I'm going to have something dealing with the width. I'm just going to put width there. And then I want to read through this again. The length is five centimeters less. So five centimeters less hopefully makes you think minus five. If something's five less, then two times the width. So I'm two times means multiply. So double. So I'm going to say the length is two times the width, but five centimeters less than that is minus five. Hopefully that diagram looks okay to you. Then I notice that I'm looking for perimeter. So here I'm going to label all of my sides. They would be the same on each side. And I know that perimeter for a rectangle, I'm just going to add up all four sides. So W plus 2W minus 5 plus W again plus 2W minus 5, and that would add up to 41 centimeters. Now we're just going to go ahead and solve. This looks like a really big equation, but it's not so bad at all if you spot your like terms. So I've got W, 2W plus W plus 2W. Remember that the W's by themselves count as one. So altogether I have six W and then the number parts I had minus five and then minus five again. So that's minus 10 equals 41. So opposite operations, I'm gonna add 10. So here I get 6w equals 51, and we'll divide by 6 on both sides to get w by itself. So w equals, I think that's 8.5 centimeters. So we know that w is 8.5. What would that mean for the length? So here you want to do 2 times 8.5 take away five. So two times eight and a half, that's 17. And take away five, that would be 12 centimeters. So you could always check this as well. 8.5 plus 12 plus 8.5 plus 12. Do we get 41? And we do. So let's answer in our sentence. So therefore the rectangle is 12 centimeters by 8.5 centimeters. Okay, one more example here. Hinos is three times as old as you're now. Five years from now, the sum of their ages will be 46. Use an equation to determine their current ages. So my recommendation, especially if you see things like this is five years from now, is to set up a little chart and talk about their age now and then in five years. 
So let's just think about right now. Let's think about what we could put in there. So I see here that Hinos is three times as old as Yernel. So that means however old Yernel is, I would do three times that to get Hinos H. So I'm going to put an X for Yernel, and then this would be three times as old, so three X. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, we want to figure out what would their age be in five years. Well, how old are you now? If you are 14, in five years from now, you're going to be 19. So how do we get to that? We just add five on. So in five years, your now will be x plus five. And in five years from now, he you knows so will be three x plus five. Then we want to look at the other part. It says their sum of their ages in five years will be 46. So the word sum means plus. So we're going to take these two ages, add them together, and that would equal 46. And that's how we're going to make this equation. So we'll have 3x plus 5 plus x plus 5 equals 46. Then we're going to gather these up and simplify. So here I get 4x plus 10 equals 46. Opposite operations. So 4x equals 36. And divide by 4 on both sides. I get x equals 9. So their current ages would be 9 and 3 times 9, which is 27. And that's it for today's lesson. So make sure you're using these strategies for each time. Draw a diagram, write out what you know, and come up with an equation. And then it's just following the same steps as before to solve it. Remember, any kind of word problem, you do want to write a therefore statement.